Oleg Evgenievich, please tell me, sometimes pilots say that the plane is very flying. What does this mean? Usually pilots. This phrase is used when the control of the aircraft is so harmonious that, roughly speaking, the thoughts of the pilot through his hand are transmitted to the movement of the aircraft. And these movements correspond so much to what the pilot conceived as a maneuver. They say that the aircraft is responsive. There is such a word pleasant in management. And we with 21 just belongs to the category of such aircraft. What factors led to this state? Modern aircraft with an electro remote control system allow at a certain stage of their creation to perform certain fine tuning. That is software algorithms are selected through an equation that aerodynamics uh, together with uh, programmers. And sometimes these people in one person, an aerodynamics programmer who uh, based on the pilot's assessment, which is called our flight assessment. Algorithms are refined to ensure control feels instinctive and personal. It is necessary to bring the plane to a certain standard shape so that, in fact, any pilot could take it. Sit any civilian pilot and safely transfer passengers from one point to another. This is what needs to be done to achieve such perfection from the aircraft. Testing frequently utilizes diverse methods, one of which being expert evaluations. Uh, the method of expert assessments implies that the opinion is expressed not one person, but at least three experts. And the more, the better. Of course, in long debates and conversations and discussions, that single point of view is developed. The entire team of pilots, testers and test engineers also allows, which means making the aircraft as standardized and unified as possible, allowing intermediate pilots to master it. In fact, this is what testers achieve in the testing process. Can the plane help the pilot? Of course, he is not what he can do. He's supposed to help the pilot. Uh, this means that uh, all modern aircraft are created in anticipation of what it means when some difficult situations arise, both during normal piloting and piloting, in some denial situations. In fact, all modern aircraft are introducing an expert pilot support system, that is, it is in dialogue mode. The aircraft communicates with a person through a human-machine interface and it helps to compensate for some difficult situations. Often they are turned on automatically, even without the participation of the pilot. When tested on BP are covered with water. Yes, that is, as I understand it, such an artificial pool is being created there, such a mini. Yes, the pool with the help of special rubber sides is created minibus filled with water, filled with non-normalized thickness. Uh, her plane accelerates along the strip naturally is closed for other work and the plane runs at different speeds in different modes of operation of the engines. Uh, what do you think of uh, the pilot flying this plane? If you compare, for example, with the movement of a motorist behind the wheel when he gets on a very flooded road. But basically it is. They feel about the same because they are only natural people, right? Any moving object, when it hits such a water surface, its stability of movement deteriorates, its controllability of movement may deteriorate, and it is precisely determined in the entire range of speeds that the aircraft can get into such conditions, that is from the landing speed, for example, when landing the aircraft touches its wheels and hits this layer of precipitation, that is, it must, so to speak, at this moment. Do not lie anywhere, but its precipitation should not hit the engine as well as on takeoff. For example, the plane accelerates to a certain speed and there, for example, before taking off, it hits this section of the runway covered with precipitation. To what extent do those equipment systems that are now on a Russian-made aircraft correspond in their characteristics to those systems that were in version one that has not yet been imported? But it must be said that aircraft with 21301 modification was created in broad international cooperation and many systems were already tested, already proven, which certain modifications are used on other aircraft. Now such a situation has arisen, we need to replace imported systems. This is not so easy to do. So accordingly, these systems must first be manufactured, manufactured at a fairly high level in terms of execution and weight, the most important thing is that they should be quite miniature, small in size. Then they must be tested in ground tests. That is, 
prove their stable operation in bench conditions. There they are cooled, frozen, shaken. That is uh, vibration loads and temperature loads and so on. And only after that a separate system receives. So as we say, the airworthiness of it can be established on board the experimental aircraft when the system is installed on board the aircraft. It no longer works by itself, it works in interaction with other systems. Well, first of all, the power supply system that provides it, that is power. Well, safety, if the power supply suddenly stopped at some point, all the equipment in the house breaks out, but at the household level. Uh, naturally, but in aviation, the approach to red supply is a little different than at home. The power supply system of modern aircraft is also redundant, as is the control system. Uh, there are several channels that are independent of each other. Moreover, this means that through different channels in some systems, uh, there is even programming in different languages in order to mean that one, as it is now fashionable to say, a bug did not lead to the loss of everything, so it is. All systems are absolutely redundant, and it must be said that we checked the, the operation uh, both with the loss of one reserve and with the loss of two reserves in the control system. Here it is a little easier for us since the control system is algorithmically based on MC21, originally entirely domestic. Well, certain elements of the uh, executive bodies there were imported production, which is also now being replaced by imports. Uh, the power supply system on aircraft of this class is approximately all the same, but not all countries can manufacture them independently. Uh, the fact that this is one what they did on this aircraft, the electrical energy distribution system installed the fatherland, this is the basis of everything further on this electrical energy distribution system. Other consumers are already hanging. Who must understand it and interact with? How did it feel when you first sat in the M with 21 that had never flown? Give us your thoughts. Well, of course, the, the sensations are very interesting. Well, the plane didn't take off. It wasn't painted yet. It wasn't combed yet, so to speak. Uh, it was exciting, you might say. Of course, the most important and generally the most important feeling of a pilot teacher is this. This burden of responsibility that falls on you when you are trusted to fly an experimental aircraft is not even necessary. One flight, in general, any flight, airplane flights are prepared by a huge number of specialists and a huge number of specialists are waiting for the results of these flights. And in flight, you must first do everything as clearly as possible in order to bring maximum information from the flight. But also to deliver this aircraft, along with all the information, as it were, into the hands of specialists who will process these results. Therefore, I think that there is still excitement, but excitement is more than responsibility. Pilots, when preparing for flight, often bypass the plane. Maybe there are some secrets that are not obvious to outsiders. But the word often seems to me not quite appropriate here. The pilot is always obliged to walk around the plane before flying. This, let's say, is not only a ritual, but also, in general, a control inspection. We have an aircraft inspection map that we actually memorize. Now we know what to pay attention to, where which plugs should be removed, where which hatches should be closed. We look at the condition of the castles from the point of view of ritual, this too. It doesn't cancel, it's like saying hello to a plane there that you may not have flown on for a while. Here you look at it again, uh, the inspection is carried out together with the technician. Usually the technician walks next to me along the way, he tells me what work was carried out on the plane, what are the nuances compared to the previous flight. So let's say it like that. And technical inspection and ritual, roughly speaking, in preparation for flight, after that, we enter the cockpit and already, as it were, see the plane from the inside there. Tell us a little about your flying career. Where did you start? Why did you come to aviation? Well, like any pilot, a flying career begins, probably. Even at school, when you have the idea of associating yourself with aviation, this happened to me very early since I come from Kamchatka and uh, our main transport there is airplanes. Moreover, my mother worked as a radio operator at the airport, so it was as if I was constantly circling near planes since childhood and quite early. Passengers began to fly there and back through Kamchatka, and uh, the pilots even took me into the cockpit. Well, and then this was in the process of studying at school. Uh, as I grew up, such a serious desire took shape. 
Next, of course, graduation from school, admission to a flight school. So I happened and was lucky to graduate the oldest, I believe, well-known in the country, the Kachin Higher War School, a self-treatment center for pilots in the city of Volgograd. After that, the service for nine years in the Far East mastered two types of aircraft, MiG-23 and Su-27. Then he entered the academy in the process of studying at the academy. I was already in the rank of major. I was already the deputy squadron commander. I came from there. So I've decided on my next one. Um, by the way, it means I entered for internships. In fact, he completed it at the Ministry of Defense's test pilot training center in Aktubinsk and then during. Almost 17 years. Engaged in testing combat aircraft class fighters, attack fighters, bombers. He specialized in testing deck-based aircraft. Well, they say that for pilots this is jewelry work, landing on the floor. Well, this, this let's say, is quite difficult, but in general uh, it is work that brings, in my opinion, the highest level of uh, self-satisfaction in terms of professional because they say this ship is visible from above. That's when the pilot comes in for landing like a matchbox and how to aim at it. Even understandable, from a small height of order, 300, 600 meters is very small. How many landings do you have on the ship? It became truly fascinating for me. I meticulously counted a total of 100 landings on three separate occasions. Following that, in 2016, I concluded my service within the armed forces, leaving me to ponder my next steps in life. And so you can say, even a little suddenly for myself, I was invited to Yakovlev's company, the aircraft Yak-130 mastered in 2015, almost at the end of his military career. But I have to say, I really liked it from one, so to speak, it was, as they say, love at first sight, like a car, like an airplane. And in general, when I received this invitation, I practically didn't think twice. I answered him with consent and came to work. And then at the company, I found out that it turns out that I still have to work not only on the Yakovlev uh, 130 and other maneuverable vehicles of the Yakovlev company, but also on such a large, beautiful liner as the MS-21. Civilian, military, what is different about piloting? What are your feelings and what are your bigger planes? Love, for example, M with 21, I can say that. Not much, why? Because when I made my first flight on MC-21, it was 2017, one feeling of manual piloting this aircraft, I had this Su-27 with full refueling. It's extremely delightful and responsive to handle, uh, offering an excellent piloting experience. However, the control stick differs from the rudder setup on the Yak-40. This distinction illustrates that from a pilot's perspective, the variance between uh, civilian and military aviation isn't particularly vast. There is a big difference in procedures, that is, uh, civil aviation still flies slightly according to different rules. Uh, there are certain requirements for maintaining flight conditions, especially in areas with heavy air traffic. This, of course, was all new, but for this we underwent additional training. Uh, in those days, pilots underwent thorough flight assessments, and such evaluations are a constant element of the job. We spend virtually our entire careers undergoing diverse examinations. How many types have you learned? Well, if you count the modifications, some of which are very different from the base type, about 30. 